Hi, I'm not wearing any clothes. Let's look at some artwork by Lee Bum Bermijo. Bum Bermi Bermejo Bermejo Bermijo. I don't know how it's pronounced, and I don't fucking need to know. Him and I aren't friends. It's not really relevant. Um, I'm not in the business of knowing things like that. I'm in the business of looking at some fucking pictures. This is the Joker. I had a little period. <laughs> periods. Fucking yes. Vaginal discharge. Blood and shit. We love it. Cool. I had a little period of, of uh, buying up tons, all I could find, of, of specific Joker comic books. Not Batman and the Jokers in it, but ones that were about... Like Joker, this, Arkham Asylum, that, Sam Keith one, that was, we really don't need to go into that. Um, frankly, this one, the best that I've seen out of there. I actually read it a few times because I really like, because, you know, I'm an edgy teen at heart. Um, so I like the Joker. Mm. Uh, but th this, as you can see, this rendition is very sort of... Uh, reminiscent of the old Dark Knight Heath Ledger, R.I.P. Joker, with the scars and all. Uh, do you know how he got those scars? Funny story. Uh, he, uh, um, so Joker gets released from Arkham, and then the whole comic is like him wreaking havoc on Gotham. Um, it's told largely through the eyes of this guy, who's like his name's Johnny. He's just like an every every man worker, blue collar kind of guy who like hangs around doing odd jobs for the Joker, uh, and it's good. It's pretty good. The inking largely is done by somebody else over Lee Bermijo's uh, pencils, I guess, and it is very graphic. He uses these weird like sharp, very sharp angles. I don't know how well it shows up on camera or whatnot. Very sharp angled lines. I don't know how much of that was in the original pencils or whatever, but it's a pretty nice style. And it's contrasted very, very well with these pages that Lee Bermelsro uh, inks himself. Um, I think if he colours them himself, it's all done digitally, but it's a lot softer and really, really well, like nicely rendered pieces, which are like, as you can see, this is very, very graphic, sort of bold colours and the, the harsh black lines everywhere, like black shadows and whatever. And then this is, is more sort of like toned, painted kind of images. The lighting's a lot softer, a lot more effective. Um, and so there's, there's a, a bunch. Sometimes it's just like one panel, sometimes it's whole pages. Um, but it's a really nice look to like emphasize certain bits like this with Harley getting her tits out on stage, putting a mask on before they skin this guy alive. Um, but I really like that's cool. That's cool anyway. That's a cool like painting of the Joker, but in a comic book surrounded by similar artwork, it's also very good. Uh, and then I do like the graphic, like harsh black lines and and shit that they they put in also i i don't really have much to say about lee bermijo's artwork other than it's really fucking good drawing like some comic books are good cartooning some are like good in terms of comic book creation like layout and using blacks and whites for contrasts and stuff. Um, but Lee Bermijo, he, Bermijo, Bermi, I don't know how to pronounce this, fuck. And I feel so silly just calling him Lee. Uh, whatever. He, uh, his artwork is just really fucking well drawn. Especially fucking clothing. The creases. In. Let's go back to that. Uh, I met him comic-con very very briefly which is where i got him to sign the thing um but i didn't have my wits about me to really go in depth with any questions or anything um but i'd love to get a chance to ask him how much he uses reference because this looks like it could easily have been copied straight from a photo with the detail in the gloves 
and everything. But I've seen a couple of short clips of him drawing and it looks like he, he, he just sort of, he's got enough sense about what he's doing. He's drawn enough jackets to know where the creases go. But the detail, the stitches, the seams and the wrinkles and creases in the clothing is so, so spot on, which is a really fucking difficult thing to do in, in any regards, drawing, painting, whatever, comic books especially when you're doing so many panels to get the clothing and everything so spot on is really, really tricky. And he does it so well and it really fucking annoys me because of that. No, it doesn't annoy me. It's inspira inspirational, aspirational. I aspire to be able to do similar things, I guess. Um, his layouts are really good as well. He, he does really good, he's really good visually, you know. That's a really cool little insert panels. Like, I love insert panels in general, but when it's a quick little like, this is him looking like this, and then a quick face change to this panel. And this is cool, and the reflections and stuff. And it's got the cross of the church and his face, which is also the the, the embossed. Because I, I take all the dusk jacket, dusk, dust jackets off of hardback books because they're fucking annoying. And the books always look better without them, I find. Um, especially when they do little tricks like this that you never would have seen if you didn't take the shit off. Uh, yeah, it's really, really good. Um, the story, there's a lot of like... I, I assume a lot of the story is, is from the writer, Brian Az Azarello. Brian Azarello, who's written a bunch of stuff. Um, but there's stuff like where they're showing murdered people. This guy stuffed into a pipe. Just bodies and shit. This is all told visually. They, they don't mention it in the story. Um, but it's, it's very well done from Mr. Lee. A uh, really good take on, I think this is Killer Croc. It's just like a big black gangster guy with bumpy, like, scaly skin, rather than an actual crocodile. Which is one thing I like about this book as a whole, is it's very sort of grounded, um, which suits Lee's style. Um, I'm just calling him Lee now, because fuck it. Because uh, he's got a, a, like I say, he's, he's not necessarily a cartoonist, like, you know, classic Spider-Man or even classic Batman comics or whatever. Um... His artwork is very, very grounded in reality in terms of facial expressions never get too quirky or wild. You know, his face is obviously kind of cartoony because it's the fucking penguin, but it is all very sort of gnarly and realistic, the clothing and proportions and everything. It never gets too wild and crazy. Um, so to have Killer Croc be a human who's just like, you know, scaly and weird looking, um, bumpy, is... is uh, a lot more sensible in terms of this graphic novel than having like a, a human crocodile hybrid. Um, really, really, again, nice panels inked by him. Um, there are, there's more visual things in here, like him crying with Harley Quinn. And she's just like drinking, smoking. She doesn't really care, probably. Pills and stuff, the coke and shit. Um, and they get into, I guess from sort of here onwards, the Joker just being really kind of fucked up. Uh, just just a bad piece of shit. Um, a different take on the Riddler. Not too into it, but yeah, it's whatever. It's whatever, it's whatever, it's whatever. Good reflection, again. That's, that's a really good panel. So... He, he does his layouts really well. Um, another one that I think is like, you can call an artist as opposed to just a comic book artist. I don't really know much of what he does outside comic books, but I know his comic book art is very, 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 very good. Um, there's a few more little like jokery bits. There's him just chilling bad mouth people on the phone being the joker pills everywhere that's quite a cool little like you know coke like a visual just a visual thing just to, to show you like he's not just some cartoon clown villain he's actually like a fucked up person he's taking copious amounts of all kinds of drugs and he's just just being a fucking piece of shit 
this bit's quite quite grim. Um, he's with Two Face, and I think he goes to shake his hand or something. Takes off his glove, swipes, and he's slit his wrist because he's jabbed loads of shards of glass into his fingertips to use as a weapon. Um, that he then cuts his face with nasty stuff and this is so this is johnny this guy the, the every man and this is his girlfriend that i think they were holding hostage or something and then um heavily 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 implied as the joker comes out of the car doing his trousers up with her in the back he obviously fucked johnny's girlfriend in the back of his car that makes us even no i think like johnny like kind of double crossed him but didn't so he fucked his girlfriend Spitting at the camera, just being an absolute piece of shit. They go into this home. Uh, who are these people? Who cares? Um, and he's just laying in bed, having murdered this poor old couple, just laying in their blood with a straight razor. Just very, very like visual storytelling of the Joker being like, again, grounded in reality, a you know, cartoony villain ish, but. Just nasty, nasty Joker. And then Batman shows up and, like, whatever. He's, he's caught all the Joker's friends and then he gets to the Joker. Oh, no, what's going to happen? This is quite cool where the Joker's asking why he keeps this bit open, why that strong chiseled jaw on the show. And then Batman's like, to mock you. Ooh, ooh, dark night indeed. Um... Really cool artwork, though. I mean, there's, there's me saying all the... I bring out those points of the um, the story because they're told very well visually with, you know, Mr. Bernie Ho's artwork. The, the very, very sort of graphic blood is pretty cool against the more toned illustration. The s fucking stitchings and creasings in the clothes, always. Just so fucking good, man. Even in like the graphic black and white sort of section, they're really, really cool. Um, one th so that's, oh, that's good. This is Batman Noel, story and art by Lee Bermijo. So he, this is his, his book entirely. The colors are by someone else. Um, colors by Barbara Siado, Siado, I don't know, whatever. Um, I guess it's like a, a take on the Christmas Carol, but it's Batman. The colours are really, really rich, and I really do appreciate them. The artwork's good throughout. Again, the fucking clothing and shit and the detail in the facial expressions. Very grounded in reality, again, visually. Um, all the detail in Batman's costume. It'd be so easy to just draw Batman, big, muscly Batman, but... The creases, the stitchings, everything, the lighting and everything. It's just so fucking good. Now, one thing the Joker made me think a bit, this book made me think a lot more of, is what I'd love to see is a book like this, just in Lee Bermijo's Blacks and Whites. Just black and white. Um, there's, there's, there is a quite a cool uh, bit. Uh, Superman shows up. And that's a like the colours, obviously not his, but done really, really well. You know, greys and blues and stuff in general with sort of orange glow of, of lights and things. That's pretty much the feel of the book. And then Superman shows up and he's a glow of his blues, reds and oranges. Um, and a really, really nice looking, like really well built drawing of Superman. Um, cool little x-ray where... Superman seeing that he's got like hypothermia or, or uh, pneumonia. Yeah, there you go. Batman's coughing up a lung. Um, and then there's a story with the kid and his dad and there's some shit. And then uh, the Joker shows up. It's got all the characters. There you go. Joker's putting Batman away and he's fucking shit up as usual. <laughs> the kid's like, Santa, is that you? No, no, it fucking isn't. Uh, that's it's cool. It's again, I can't say too much about it other than he's really fucking good at drawing. 
But then the back has this, which is a little bit of a blessing because it's like exactly what I wanted to see. Look how fucking strong that is. The colors in this book are great. They're really, really good, really rich, powerful colors, especially in, with the color tones in contrast from the cityscapes to fucking that Superman scene. But look how fucking striking and strong that is. He even says he doesn't usually fill in blacks and stuff in his layouts. I guess he leaves it up to the colorist or whatever. But it's so, like, I'd love to see an entire book like this. I don't know if he might have done one or several. I don't know. I, I don't research. I just, whatever. Um, but it's just really good. And it's also a shame that this is such a small image. Um, some more layouts and stuff like that. The layout and then the actual thing. It should be backwards. The layout should be this big and this should be that big. Um, or maybe it shouldn't, I don't know. And he's obviously using some kind of drawing pen, like a fine line, fine tip pen. But he still gets an insane amount of detail. And he pulls out all the creases and stuff, the shine on Catwoman's suit. It's really fucking good. Ink washes and stuff, I guess he uses for the greys. Oh yeah, that's Superman. Oh yeah, oh that fuck is Superman. Again, the colours are fantastic, but in black and white, that's a really, really strong page. Because there's still a lot of contrast between Superman and the rest of the, the, the page. That's really cool. I wonder if that's done, like, added in digitally. I assume it is. But... Yeah, man. Just good fucking drawing. Which is, it is nice to see. Like I say, cartooning is one thing, but then just seeing some solid, like, just fucking illustration, just draftsmanship. Just good fucking drawing. Um, this is a series I had no real interest in. It's before Watchmen, it's like the prequel. Prequel to Watchmen, the best selling graphic novel of all time. Um, they released a bunch of these and then collected some of them together. So this is the Comedians Collected Comics and Rorschach. Comedian, pretty cool, dig the comedian. I dig what he's about more so than his character and arc as a whole. Um, and obviously Rorschach is like the favorite, the best. Um, and it's Rorschach's tale in this book, written by, by Brian Azzarello, who wrote The Joker, and drawn by Lee Bermijo, who drew The Joker, and coloured by the same colourist who did Noel that we just saw. So again, the colours are really rich, rich and nice. Um, they're not too typical, like, they are pretty, you know, comic book digital colour, but they are, there's, there's, they're really, really, I don't know, rich, I guess, that's a, and they do, she, I think it's, it's a her, isn't it, the, the name of the, the colorist, where's the fucking name of the colorist, uh, Barbara Sciacciato, uh, yeah, the tones, the blues and orange is, is always a classic contrast, the orange and the blue, so she gets those in there, which is really, really cool, um, not much to say about it, I haven't even read it, because uh, Rorschach's cool and all, but like once you've read The Watchmen, this sort of stuff, it's unnecessary. You don't need to do any more. Like The Watchmen is enough. It's a, it's a contained story. It's one piece. It's a thing. You don't really need to go outside of that. Um, and, you know, he's a good enough artist that I can just about figure out what's going on by the artwork itself. The covers are really, really good. That's quite a good play on the old smiley face badge from the original. Rorschach's journal. Um, yeah, drawing, clothes, creases and shit. Good, good uh, grounded, realistic scenes and shit, even though it's a bit of a kooky, crazy off the wall kind of story with a guy wearing a mask. Grips on the shoes. See, every time I draw shoes, if 
I do grip, I just go like, you know, cross hatch, whatever, or all black or all white, just to contrast the bottom of the shoe with the rest of the body. But I, I assume Mr. Lee Bermijo has some kind of mental illness that makes him put in this level of detail. I don't know. Maybe he's just good. I'm sure that is the case. Like I say, I met him and he seemed completely like normal and down to earth. So I, I assume he's just good at drawing. But uh, to put that much effort into shit, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Uh, yeah, good, cool. I'm sure it's a great story. Um, oh, Jim Lee. That's a Jim Lee drawing. That's cool. He's a bit of a legend in the industry, isn't he? Um, oh, so this is the last page. A very, very quite cool, almost a callback to the original with the nine panel grid that they have throughout the original whole book. Um, I assume this is a bad guy comes home, go looks out the window, Rorschach's there. He pulls the blind down and Rorschach, oh no, he's got him, he's choking him. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's ultimately, I don't know if, if you, you, you're into Lee Bermejo. He's good though, isn't he? He's just, uh, you know, 